Hey everyone, April Dunham here. Today I'm going to show you how to create a nutrition tracker app and power apps using Power Apps and Flow. So I'm going to show you first how the app works and then we'll take it apart and figure out how we got there. So I went with a Halloween theme since Halloween's next week. As you can see, I'm using the barcode scanning functionality to scan an item. So I have these kind bars, one of my favorites here. So I scan the label and it's calling this API and it's returning the information. So the calories, the carbs, the sugar, and it's even giving me an emoji rating. Pretty cool, right? So now that you see how the app works, let's take a look at how you can build it yourself. So what I'm using to actually return the nutrition information for an item is the Nutrition IX API. This is actually free for individual use. Um, if you just go to developer.nutritionix.com, um, you can sign up for a free account and that will give you an API key that you use to call. I like this API because I find the documentation is pretty good. If you go here to docs, it kind of walks you through um, the endpoints that you can call and all of that. So first up, sign up for that. Then we need to create a flow that will call that API and return information to us in our Power App. So I like to start there. So what you want to do is create a new blank flow, as you can see that I did here, and the uh, trigger is going to be Power Apps. Next thing we're going to do is initialize a few variables to hold the data that we're going to want to return to Power App. So for the example you saw, I'm just returning the calories, sugar, carbs, an image and the item name. So I'm creating variables for each of those and they're all just string variables. Then we need to actually call the API. And we do that with the flow HTTP request. The method we're going to want to use for this is a get because we're getting the nutrition information. And all I'm doing here is passing in the REST API endpoint and I'm passing in a UPC code. So as you can see on the end here, it says UPC equals, and then I'm getting that UPC code from Power Apps, passing that in. And in the headers, that's where I'm defining my app ID and my app key, which I get when I sign up for a free account on the Nutrition IX website. So you'll pass in your unique ID and key there. Next step we need to do is insert a parse JSON action. So you're going to pass in the body of your request there, and you want to upload a sample payload. You can do that by looking at the documentation on the Nutrition IX website, and they have a lot of sample endpoints and sample data that you can look at, and you can figure out what that um, JSON return is going to look like, and you'll paste that in as your sample payload. Now the key here um, that you'll want to make sure that you do is notice here where we say uh, food name, so the object is food name, and we're defining the type string. Same thing for brand name. If you scan an item and any of these don't have a value, like maybe this particular item doesn't have uh, sodium listed. If you just have it where it says type number for sodium, flow will actually error out because it's expecting a number, but because the item you scan doesn't have a sodium amount, it's going to say, we got null, but we were expecting a number. So the way that you get around that, and I have a blog post on this on my SharePoint Simon website that explains this in a little bit more detail, is you wrap that in at, at your type, you define the type number, and then you also allow for null. So you put in your type, comma, and allow for null, and that will get you around those errors. The next thing you need to do is set those variables that we initialized up above. So we're going to set the calories variable to the calories from our parse JSON object here. So you can see if I scroll down here and parse JSON, all of those properties from my HTTP request are being returned here for me to use. So I'm going to set the calories to the calories, the carbs to the carbs, etc. And then the last thing to do is just to insert a respond to Power Apps object. And we're just going to define the things that we want to return to Power Apps, like the calories, the carbs, the sugars, the image, and the name, and set those to those variables that we defined and set in the step above. So that's all we need from the flow side. Now let's jump over to Power Apps and see what we need to do there. 
So here's the app you saw at the beginning of the video. And all I have right here is a welcome screen. And the only three things on this welcome screen are a couple labels and a button that says scan. What I'm doing here is I'm using the native uh, phone barcode functionality and I'm calling the flow. So I'm actually setting a variable called nutrition scan and in that variable I'm saying run our get nutrition info flow that we just created and I'm passing it in, you know I need to pass it in a UPC code to look up. Well I'm passing in the scan barcode function which will trigger the, the barcode scanning ability of my phone and it will pass in the UPC code it finds into this flow. That flow will run and then we're going to navigate to our candy details screen that shows the information, the nutrition information for the object. So let's go to candy details. And as you can see on this screen, I just have a few labels on here. So I have a label for, well I have one, I have an image control here. And I'm setting that image control to our variable nutrition scan dot image. So it's recognizing that that variable nutrition scan is our object from the flow and is telling me here are the available properties that you have that you're passing back to Power Apps to consume. So I can get the calories, the images, the carbs. So this is the image. So I'm saying dot image and that will return the image. And I'm just doing the same thing for these other. Uh, labels. I'm this one. I'm highlighting that this is calories. I'm doing the and sign, and I'm passing in the var nutrition scan dot calories. Now, as an added bonus, I wanted to kind of give the end user um, an easy way to figure out how bad this food is for you. So I added these emojis, and these are just icons. So if we go to insert and in icons, scroll down a little bit here, you'll see that you have all of these different emojis to choose from. So you have a frowning emoji, a smile, a sad, and a neutral. So I added all those to my canvas and Power Apps, and I just did some logic for the invisible property. So let's click on the sad emoji, for example, and let's go to the visible property. So all I'm saying here is, and since this is a Halloween candy based demo, I'm going off of the sugar. So I'm saying if the sugar value returned, is greater than 30 grams then show the sad emoji because that's really bad for you that's about the amount of sugar you should have in an entire day in one candy and I'm just doing the same thing so for the happy emoji I'm defining the visible property as if the sugar is less than 10 grams then show because that's relatively good for you otherwise false so pretty simple that's all that we need from the app perspective. Now obviously there's room to expand this. It can show more detailed information. I'm just showing calories, carbs, and sugar, but you can show fiber and any fat, anything else that you would be interested in, you can return that here. Additional functionality that you could add, you could, once you scan an item, you can say add this to log and you can keep a running log of the things that you've ate. This was just a simple example that I wanted to show you how you could utilize uh, that API for free um, call it with flow and return the data in Power Apps for a, a quick nutrition app. Hope you enjoyed this. If you found it beneficial, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to show later on ways that you can expand upon this nutrition app concept.